let, let, let's do one more fight. I'm going to do a UAE fight of Mano here. Still got a little bit of time here. I'm going to do one more here. TJ says she's the number one rookie of the year. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, yeah, she she is. She's the number one rookie. I mean, I am. Yeah, from Boa. That was a third round stoppage. Yeah, let's do that fight real quick. Let's see how many fights Manon already had. She was in uh, one, two, three, four. This was her fourth fight in the game. That fight is on YouTube as well. UAE Warriors 12, Manon. Let's call that one. This one ends in the third round TKO for Manon. All right, let's look at this tail of the tape. Yeah, Manon was 4-1 and one here. Uh, Corinne, 5-3 and three from Canada. All right. Well, that's pulling up here. Give me one second, and we'll take a look at this fight. We're going to see how much improvement she's made going into her. Did I say she was 4-1 already? Yeah, they, they must be counting them exhibition bouts from that fighter house she did. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So this is her sixth fight. Let's watch her sixth fight. So we did her debut. Let's just watch her sixth fight together here. All right, Let me pull this thing up. Okay. All right. Let's let's get the let's get this one going here. So we got Manon Firo and Corinne Laframbois. <laughs> she must be a French Canadian. All right. All right. And referee waves them in. We're gonna fight. Here we go, y'all. Touch of gloves already. Manon we got that check right hook as Corinne comes blasting in. Manon has to get it under pressure. She smothers her to the cage. Fast pace already, man. I got to rewind and just see what happened. Let's see what happened. All right. At the ring of the sound of the bell, Corinne came blasting in. And Manon took a nice step back. Nice step back. That's what I'm saying. Like her footwork polished in six fights already. Look at that. She took a step back, th throws like a right hook out, then a hard kick to the body on Corinne. Corinne's blasting shots here, so Manon ties her up, gets both underhooks here, and she's clinching. She's pressing Corinne to the cage. So Corinne wanted to go in there and, and just let it all go, but Manon got it under control after landing, you know, a good, a good, good kick to the body here. All right, so Manon, strong here. Now Manon's in control, landing some knees to that uh, to the back thigh of uh, Corinne. So Manon's got a lock on that body. Good head control here. Corinne's trying to free up the one arm to get an underhook. I can see she's having trouble with that strength. Hard knees exchange from both fighters. Harder knees from Manon because he's hitting the back of that um, that back of the knee. Hitting the back of the leg of Corinne with those hard knees. So Manon's starting to find her offense here now. Not only is she clinching with this, you know, putting that strength, but she's working knees. Referee separates them though. This referee said, I need more work. Well, you know, y'all know me. I like stand up. So here we go. She separates them. No bet, bet, nice footwork. Very, very good footwork. Ooh, hard right hand from Corinne there. She's kind of throwing in these wild shots. And Manon's kind of ducking here. She's her hard right hand. Manon switches levels, goes in for his takedown attempt, and slams Corinne. Got the double leg, boy. So Manon, who said Manon ain't got no ground game? Where BJ at? He disappeared. He said Manon ain't got no ground game. Manon is actually having to work here. All right, let me pause it here for a second. So just so you know, BJ, if he's somewhere around, Manon does have work on the ground. All right. She's got work on the ground here because this girl wants to strike and put pressure on her. 
But what is Manoa doing? She's actually clinching up, taking this fight to the ground. Look at that big double leg takedown, slam. And Manoa's on top here in the guard. Karen trying to hold that head of Manoa. She's trying to control her head, but you can see how uh, Manoa's ooh, elbows to the back of the head there from Karen. Manoa keeping it tight here. She's staying tight in that guard. Because, yeah, she wants to get that separation so she can work that, um, work them hammer fists. All right, close guard of Korean. Ooh, hard right hand from Manon there. Nice ground and pound. When, Man you know, Manon really tightens up on her ground game, she's going to be hard, man. Okay, good inside fighting on the ground here. <clears throat> Yeah, she's so throwing a lot of good inside fighting here for her from Manone. Ooh, hard right hand, and she goes back on the inside. See, y'all notice that, like, Manone is, like, doing some tricks that you do in inside fighting when you stand up. Like, let me let me pause here at the 228 mark. Like, Manone, she'll, like, come out, land a hard right hand, and she'll go back in and start mauling, mauling. And then she'll come out, land a couple shots, go back in and start pressuring, pressuring you. That's what you do when you stand up fighting, like, you know, you know, like Muay Thai and boxing, you know, the inside fighting. Hard punches there from Manon. We start right back here. Here we go. This is, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you think, okay, Jillian, she could probably, okay, well, if they went to the ground, go for that submission. But I don't think Manon Fear is going to make it easy for her. <laughs> Not going to be easy to submit because she's got a lot of strength here. Good mauling work here from Manon. Good ground control, hard elbows here. Yeah, Karen was actually trying to put pressure on and, uh, you know, just back up Manon and land the harder punches. So Manon shifted gear. She went to the ground. Uh oh, I think somebody is close to being a well rounded fighter. <laughs> I don't know what people say, but Manon's looking like a well rounded fighter to me. She can go to the ground. She working. Corinne trying to go for that guillotine. It's hit, but she can't get that leverage here. Can't get up at all here because Manon got her in that half guard. <laughs> yeah, Kenza, he says same double A takedown she's shown in the UFC, right? A lot of work here for Manon. Controlling top position nicely. And that was a good good roll from uh Karen to try to get back up here. I don't got that sprawl here. And when I was getting back to her feet, but she's trying to keep her down. Less than a minute left in this round. <clears throat> and then climbs on that back. She's on that back like she was at Leah McCourt. The triangle around the body, trying to go for that rear naked choke. Who said Manone ain't got no ground game? Oh, come on now. She's showing a ground game even on this level. Ooh, hard hammer. Ooh, hard ground and pound from Manone. Corinne, she separated. She was able to escape that uh, rear naked choke attempt. But no one is back to work in here. Hard fist. Hard fist, boy. Yeah, that was a nice back take. Can't tell you it was. Like, you know, so she's got some work, man. She got work on the ground. This has been beautiful work here. No stand up shown here. In and around. Ooh, up kick from Korean there. No one's in and around with two seconds here. Complete domination that round. Yeah, you see the striker. Here comes the striker. Korean wants to be the striker. Ooh, hard right hand from Manon. Manon put that separation there. It's the second round, y'all. I just went right into it. So. Corinne's throwing these right hands, side kick to the body from a known. She's good at controlling distance now, right? You can see the difference. Swinging her way in there. Corinne swings her way in. Manon locks it up, gets both underhooks again. Corinne's got her back to the cage, man. <laughs> oh, 
Corinne tried to hold on that fence to get that. I'll let that fence go. Corinne trying to Corinne take she took Corinne down again here. Corinne and that closed guard Manon on top. <laughs> he said Manon got weak ground. Yeah, he said all my facts and evidence don't make sense. I know. He's channeling my man, right? You channeling. He channeling no filter. <laughs> Look at this work, though. I'm just saying this whole fight is groundwork here, man, for me know. Can we give it up for her, man? Can we give it up and say she is close to being a well-rounded fighter? Even more so than in other girls I'm looking at. Now, it might get dangerous with Aaron Blanche, I ain't going to lie, because Aaron's jiu-jitsu is so smooth. But I don't know, man. Like, Manon's grappling here and her, her wrestling is so, you know, powerful because she's just strong and she's active it could give any fighter trouble like i still really wouldn't want to see her go to the ground with aaron blanchfield but if she had to i definitely would want to see this type of uh offense that she's letting go let go of that fence corinne trying to hold that fence but no one had to grab that hand she said let her go look at all this pressure corinne got back up but no one is just pressing see look at all this strength she's got here montana ain't gonna handle this look at all this strength even jillian like look jillian's a savage on the ground but manone look at the strength like how are you gonna submit somebody with this type of strength that's that's bull that's bullying you referee separates them corinne lucky she got separated because manone was like mauling all right, stand-up control. Ooh, hard right hand from Corinne. See, Corinne is actually doing well in the stand-up. So Manon shifted gears, and she's using her ground game. Hard left hand from Manon. One thing I'll say about this in Manon's sixth fight, got to move her head. Her guard is too open, and she eats hard right hands. Manon's head is too straight up and down right here. When she can't keep range and the fighter pressures her, she gets hit. Like, like Corinne is fat. Like Corinne is just constantly moving and putting pressure. Hard leg kick from Manon there. That slowed uh, Corinne down. Nice turn by Manon. Nice turn by Manon. Good angles. Ooh, I like how she shifted her hips, making her miss them kicks there. It's good work by Manon. Ooh, nice head movement there. This is what Miranda Mary needs to do. Like Miranda in the southpaw stance. You know, she'll dip her head out like that. She needs to keep doing that. See, no one is controlling the octagon well. Using every inch of it. Throwing a few shots here and there. Jabs. Nice jab by Manone again. Crazy left hand from Manone. She's just kind of circling out here. Changing up the pace on uh, Corinne. Corinne wants to go in and pressure. Manone gets her down again. Boom. Spins around and take down. All right, so Manon's back to the ground here on top. Trying to go for that side control. She's in that what? Is that like a half guard right there? Yeah. I'm about to get that. Yeah, got that left hand in. Right hands to the body. <clears throat> Manon's body attack is underrated too, like on the ground. Very brutal, man. I mean, just because if you just because you ain't seen this yet in the UFC fights, I mean, she has it. Ooh, hard ground about. Manon got the full mount, hard left hands, seven, eight. Ooh, Corinne turned right around to give up the back of Manon. Manon is hammering that head. One, two. Manon is on the back again. These girls like this is like a tricky attack that Manon she needs to really work on here. Like when she gets, she's able to like turn to the back. Ooh, Corinne is busted up. Hard side stabbing kick to the body. Hard left hand from Manon. Nice right hand from Corinne there. Corinne, ooh, hard right hand from Manon. Nice right hook to end the round. Brutal, man. Let me pause it right there for a second before we get into the third round. Pausing it right there for one second. So TJ said, I'm just happy. I'm happy to just wait and watch as the doubters get silent. He said, T, I still, I still need someone to explain how Taylor dominated Jillian Robinson on the ground and when she supposedly had no ground game. Right. No, um, you know, Manon, excuse me, 
Taylor Santos has a ground game, you know, like that's what people don't understand. Like we talk about this, you know, other channels talk about this. I know coach, he talks about this. Um, these Brazilian fighters, man, like their introduction into fighting is first Brazilian jiu-jitsu, right? That's what it is. It's first the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That's how they're all like introduced into fighting. So you have to know that Taylor Santos has that. She's got the Muay Thai as well, but she starts off in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Like you factor that and mm -hmm. um, just how strong she is. I'm like, yeah, like, oh man, like, yeah. I I can't explain how people don't think she does TJ, but I can tell you how she does them. She does have a ground game. How she does it, I don't see that. Ulysses, what's going on? He said she is the best rookie. I agree. Yeah, she's number one. This fight is proof here. Like I said, just because you don't see everything yet in the UFC, you see it in some of her early fights here, right? You see it in her early fights here. All right, let's go. Um, last round. Round three, Manon, measure and range, hard low kick there from Manon, straight left hand from Manon. This is where, she, yeah, I like this Manon, keep her hands up. Ooh, the minute she let her hands go, this is, this is okay, this is somewhere early stuff, so I ain't, look, I ain't, I ain't gonna act like my fighter perfect. Manon getting hit here, and this is where she has, like, improved. All right, so at the 4, 4 54 mark, Manon had her hands up the minute she let a combination go corinne timed her boom hard right hand hard left hook right hand left hook combination tags manon another hard right hand from corinne head got to come off the line from manon see i ain't gonna lie if i to get hit i'm gonna tell you manon head too straight up and down there she'll still get hit now every now and then so that's something they got to work on is you know taking your head off the line but she's came, she's come far from that. That was a good combination. Ooh, good straight left hand from Manon. That was a good combination, Corinne, though. You know, right hand, left hook. Then that that third right hand. Ooh, Manon with a check right hook. We'll go back here. Let's go back. Go back to 423. Corinne lands a beautiful right hand, hard right hand. Manon comes back with a good right hook. So Manone measures well now, getting a little bit slicker. The defense needs to just be a little bit tighter. Ooh, hard head kick from Manone. Nice hard right hand from Manone there too. Picking the shots here. Good straight jab to the face of Corinne right there. Ooh, hard body kick from Manone. Another hard right hand from Manon. She's picking her shots now. Nice slip from Manon there. She's taking her head off the line, making an adjustment. Nice. Low kick Manon. Ooh, hard side kick to the body. The side kick just stabbed uh, Corinne. Corinne, that took something out of her. Manon about to go after it now. Ooh, hard left hand right from Manon. Good God, this girl getting brutalized. That body shot. That side kick is what really changed her pace. You see, she she stopped coming in now. Manon just measuring now with her right jab. Yeah, yeah. Corinne's not stepping in anymore because them them kicks to the body were too brutal. Yeah, yeah. Corinne's gas now, man. She's hurt. She's just walking now. No, just landing combinations. You know, just kind of having fun here a little bit, landing a few punches. <clears throat> okay, Corinne trying, but she's done, I think. Yeah, she's not stepping in. After that side kick to the body, it just kind of, I think, took away her will to want to come in now and fight. As and, You know, as far as trying, it's as hard. Like, she's still in the fight, but she's not trying anymore, as hard as she was. Ooh. Hard body kick from a known here. Just picking shots. One, two. Wild swing from Corinne. Yeah, she's trying to swing for the fences now. Face is covered in blood, boy. Nice sharp jab from a known there. 
Corinne trying to go for that body. Ooh, spinning the roundhouse kick there. That roundhouse kick from uh, don't miss. I'm about to go in for the kill here. To leap it in with those shots. Low kick. Good one, two from a known. Here she go. Right hook. Ooh, good straight left hand from a known. Karen's kick back is to the cage. I think we could say it's pretty much about over here. With less than less than two minutes left. Known is letting it go now. A little bit of front kicks there. A little bit of a tease there. Okay. And back to the center here. We've got one minute here. Known trying to come in behind a peekaboo defense there. Yeah, that's what she needs to do. Keep her hands up. Keep your hands up. Low kick. Ooh, there go another stab and side kick to the body from Manon. And she smiled. Manon smiled. <laughs> oh, no, let's go back to that. She knew that was done. Like, I knew one more of them things, and that would be it. All right, 48 second mark. Hard leg kick from Manon. Then the side kick to the body. And Manon smiles. <laughs> and she lets the combination go. Four punch combination, six punches. Brutalized her to the center. Now Manon is beating her up on the ground. She goes to the ground, hard hammer fist. Ooh, and that fight is over. That was crazy, man. Like, <laughs> you go back to that 48 second mark, the way Manon like smiled after she hit, she stabbed her with the body. I was like, oh yeah, the fight's over here. Here we go, back to that 45 mark. Stab kick to the body. Manon smiles, walks in with a big combination. Big combination. Corinne tries to go in for a takedown attempt. Goes down herself. And Manon just fires off big punches. Left hands to the ref. Stops it, man. So that, it was a brutal fight. Dang, that was brutal. I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to take one of them shots to the body. <laughs> Those shots... You can see, like I said, they break a fighter, man. Like the first one that she landed in the middle part of the round, that first side kick she landed to the body, it stopped Corinne from wanting to come on the inside. Like you could tell, like she was already like hurt and gassed, but she didn't stop trying. But that last one she took at the 40, 45 mark, man, she just, she was done. Uh, TJ said, it makes me wonder how good Jillian's ground game really is, or is it a question of the quality of who she's up against? I think it's I think her ground game is good, but it still has something to do with the quality as well. Cause I think if her ground game was really, really good, she should be up there where like fighters like Mackenzie Dern is. You know what I mean? Like she should be in the, the top 10 now. No lie. Like Jillian, I think should be top 10 now, you know, if she had really, really stepped on her skills, like if they really are as sharp as they are. Yeah. And the boss said Mano needs to use that left kick to the calf into the body against Mano. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how you beat Jessica I is you got to go down to the body, you know, break her down, and then the head opens up. Yeah, man. But yeah, man, that was that was fun. That was fun calling both of these fights. I might have to break that up into two parts so y'all can see this part though. Because that was just a good example of how a hungry fighter evolves. If you know what I mean, right? I mean, you already saw the hunger in Manon in that first fight in her career. Her, her MMA debut at 138 was, it was a rough fight. It was a rough, ugly fight that went three rounds. But, you know, she, in my opinion, won it. But she didn't get the nod. So a lot of fighters, that's what I'm saying. Like people count out fighters early in their career, but they don't understand. Like that's a growth period. Like everybody want to count out Miranda now because she lost against Aaron Blanchfield. They say, oh, she ain't this. She ain't that. She can't be a title contender or she can't be top 10. How do you know? What are you basing that off of? Manon lost her first fight. Now you see that? 
Chris Cyborg lost her first fight. Uh, Chelsea Chandler lost her first fight. Zhang Wei Li lost her first fight. You know, a lot of people lose their first fight, but it's all in how you come back. You know, Miranda's lost several fights in between her career, but she's never like to me looked like somebody that hasn't learned from her mistakes or, you know, uh, hasn't improved. They don't go back to the same thing. You know what I mean? Like she's never going back to the same thing. She does get better. She did, she gets better. That's what I'm. That's my top four right there for the flyweight future, man. I'm gonna keep it that way because uh, right now it's the ones I see have some potential. Not just like for now, but for the long run. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna stick with that. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with that. I mean, right now I know Taylor's head of the class, but the next head of the class is definitely gonna be Manon. Like, yeah, she was she was number one rookie in my my opinion. Um, Ulysses said that no one is going to beat Chess Guy bad. Yeah, I, I'm hoping so. Like, I want to see it. Like, I don't want to jinx everybody because I know anything can happen in MMA. Because I know Jessica I's experience is her experience is something you can't underestimate. Like, Jessica I. I picked Viviana Arujo to beat her, and what happened? Just guy wins that fight. I was like, what the heck is going on here? Who else? Damn, I couldn't believe that, man. I couldn't believe that. Viviana Arujo let Just Guy beat her, man. I was like, what's going on, man? Just Guy's got a good jab, too. That's why I say Manon got to make sure she's moving her head because to me, Jessica has a good jab. She likes to box a lot. But I think that's where she might fail because Manon is strong. Manon, like what you saw in this fight was a good example of what a polished Manon is going to do. Like Corinne was brawling. You know, Jessica, I might try to dog this fight. She might try to go in there and throw big punches. But Manon, you might see her go in there and body or you know go in there control take her down um counter land them kicks to the body um that's why jojo beat just guy you know because she had the mix like she didn't just try to throw hands she could she could clinch she could fight it like a dog in there she you know beating her up on the inside jennifer maya almost lost that fight with just guy because she gave her too much space like you can't give Jessica I space like you got to be on her you got to be hitting her where it counts like Shevchenko did you know to the body go to the body go to the body go to the body and then that headshot will come you know Calvillo beat her Calvillo had a nice win over I I mean so this is a good test like if Manone is what I think she can do when she can go go move she can do as far as going forward i think she should be in there to stop her man like i know of course the casual fans they're going to say okay we're not we're expecting nothing less than a stoppage from a known like i definitely want one though i want her to get back on that stoppage track like stop one of these experienced flyways and retire them All right let's see tj said Manon is lanky and knows how to use that length. It's going to be a rough night for I. Yeah, inside and outside, I think. She's going to be on the inside working her. You know, outside, the strikes, the, uh, the left hands. Uh, Ulysses said, oh, man, Manon is going to be just got bad. Oh, man, yeah, I can't wait. TJ said, I is going to try to clinch Manon to death. She won't try to strike for, the, for too long. <laughs> Yeah, if she tries to clinch, I think, you know, Manon has an answer for that, too. TJ said Jessica I retires in 2022 one way or another. This has to be the one, you know. Who has a better chance here, okay? Let me ask you all this, TJ, not whether well, everybody here. Who has a better chance of retiring their fighter? Is Casey O'Neill going to retire? Well, well, Roxy's going to retire anyway, my bad. Roxy plans to retire anyway, but Manon, could she retire Jessica I? 
can she make her retire? Like she ain't calling retirement, but does Madonna have enough in her game to make just guys say, oh, I'm done after this fight? Ma said, but I mean, no might as well take I down. She couldn't stop Cavillo's takedown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I mean, no one has the ability to get some nice takedowns, you know, and be be dominated on top position. Robot chicks, that's why I have no faith in Arujo. <laughs> oh, man. Like, every time I pick Arujo, well, not every time because she did come through in a Roxy fight, but. When I pick Arujo against Caitlyn Chikagan, did I pick Caitlyn Chikagan or Aru? I can't remember. I know I picked. Who did I pick? I know I picked. But no, no, I picked Vivian Arujo to beat Jessica. I, I, I'm for sure about that one. But that that fight just threw me off. I was like, "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah, too much movement, too much excess movement. She wasn't prepared for just guys straight punches or straight jabs, and she got, she just got outworked. And then Kelly, then um, Caitlyn Chikay got outworked there as well, man. So, that's what I'm saying. They're just saying they're just there's just not one dominant fighter at flyweight other than Valentina, man. Like everybody, when you match their styles up. You never know where it's going to go, except if it's Valentina, then you know where it's going to go. Ulysses said, absolutely. The mom said, yeah, if she gets KO'd again, she might call it a career. TJ said, Jessica will get cut more than likely and retire. Yeah, I think so. She, yeah, they say, you ain't got no choice. You ain't fighting here. So you ain't got to retire, but you ain't fighting here. The Vivi break her hand in the Jessica I fight or the Caitlin fight? I can't remember. Let's see. Did she break her hand? Okay, let's see. I don't see anything. Maybe um, you know, I can find that for me. I can't remember. Did she break her hand? I just got a fight. I can't remember. Was it the jab hand? Because she was throwing some jabs in that fight. I think she did. You know, I think about it. Is that why she slowed down in the second and third round? I kind of remember that now. TJ said, if you can outlast our rule for one round, your chances of winning quadruple every 30 seconds thereafter. Yeah. That's why I can't put her in my top four right now. Like, I can't put her next to Taylor Santos, man, because that, that gas tank is a major part. Like, I know people think Taylor Santos doesn't have a great chance against Valentina, but her chances are higher than Vivian Arujo because all you got to do is take Vivian Arujo and, you know, pass, pass round two and it could be trouble. Like, she has a lot of good things going for her, but it's just that gas tank, man. Like, why do you think it makes it – it's making a difficult – it's a difficult pick against Grasso. Like, that's what makes it so hard to pick her, man, because her gas tank, and then you got to think about Grasso, her, her lack of a killer instinct. So I'm like, both of these fighters have something that can really cost them a fight. Like one doesn't pull the trigger, one gas is after pulling the trigger. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I just don't know, man. Like Vivian Rue definitely ain't ready for five rounds, though. Boss said the I fight. Okay, it was the I fight. The boss said, Arujo gasses quickly, but she still beat De La Rosa and Montefiore to a decision and won the third round of both fights. Yes, she did. 
She did because, well, for one, Montana doesn't have the skill to adjust and give her problems. And then when you look at Montefiore, she was just getting older. Well, Montefiore did land a good right hand. She did land a right hand whenever um, Arville started to go stationary, when she started kind of slowing down. Roxanne did tag her with a good right hand. Like she can win those fights because they are um, one's older. Then you got, like I said, Montefiore a little bit slower, just not as good with their stand up and just not as skilled. Like the fighters with cardio for days, like Caitlin Jacagan, oh yeah, like she's not going to beat them because they're constantly moving and working. Yeah, like she went three with them because, you know, they couldn't push her. I pushed her, and so did Chikagan. And then, yeah, we can say the hand injury is probably a, probably a thing, too, but got to learn to fight through them, you know? Got to fight through it. All right. Robot Chicken said, I trust God more than Aru at this point. He said Aru got sand in her gas tank. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in short terms, that's what I'm saying. Robot chicken worded the best. She can't beat the elite. Exactly. That's the best way to say it. But yeah, I'll pick her all day long to beat some of these other girls. Like, I think Aruho could still put some work in on Casey O'Neill and uh, <clears throat> some of these lower level fighters. Aside from Benoan and Aaron and Miranda. Whose gas tank is um worse? Is it Aru or Sarge? Whose gas tank would you say is a little, a little worse? What y'all think? Sarge or Vivian? <laughs> what is it? Let's see. What is this? All right, y'all. <laughs> you listen to that's a tough one. It is, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I would have to go with SARS, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do. <laughs> I think Sarge is a little bit worse because at least Vivian can still fight longer. You know, she can still like spread it out over three rounds. Like she hasn't like gone completely out the door. <laughs> you said that was tough. Yeah, you gotta go with Sarge. Uh, the boss said Vivi's gas tank is not as good, but I think it's actually not all that terrible. She just has. She just has no poker face. She always shows her fatigue. But in terms of output, she doesn't slow down that much. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that, man. Because, yeah, Vivian, when she starts huffing and puffing and she starts dropping that left hand and kind of like starts that little slouch, I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. Like, she's in the fight, right? She's still in the fight. But, she, yeah, she's not like. She's like them kids when you're trying to train somebody, like kids start putting their hands on their hips. That's why I always say, like, don't put your hands on your hips because that's how people know you're tired, right? Like every time I finish running or whatever, never put my hands on my hips because that makes you tired. You know, she kind of like that with it. Like you start huffing and puffing. You can't hold it in. So, yeah, I think maybe if she would kind of work on that and work on her cardio, she'd be fine. I mean, sorry, she just goes though sometimes. Like, she just gone. <laughs> he said, got the cost of gas tank. Yeah. Yeah, 125, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, man. But yeah, y'all, um, I'm going to get back on about seven. I just want to get on here and do some round by rounds with y'all 
And um, yeah, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. You know, like I said, if y'all like when I do these, hey, I'm gonna keep on doing them. I enjoy them. I just like going back and watching some of these fights because sometimes people need to watch fights and see where people came from to see where they're going. Like a lot of people think, oh, Manone is well, okay. This is all she is. This is all she is. She's just a stand-up fighter. No, she's got a ground game. I said, I got a surprise, y'all. Let me pull it up and we're going to call it. Corinne, look at that fight again. You'll see Manon's ground game and her strength. Right? So, yeah, um, I'm going to be back on about 7 o'clock. I'm going to talk some other WMMA and stuff like that. Like I said, just want to do some round by rounds with y'all. Haven't done, done, a while, done, done too many in a while. So, yeah. Like always, y'all, make sure y'all subscribe. Hit the thumbs up on your way out. Please do that. And um, yeah, see y'all in like two and a half hours. Combo Breaker 99. I'm out. Peace.